Hey everybody, QuestWise here, and boy, do we have a lot to unpack today. We're going to be talking about the new world of Ataltus, um RPG setting for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. we got a lot of stuff to talk about. This is going to be the beginning of a series of videos, but I just want to give you a hint today. Just a merest fiber of a hint of the excitement that I have for this setting for this uh for this world that's been created and i just want to give you a hint of what to expect from this company what to expect from this world setting and how it's going to change the way you play fifth edition like i said this is going to be the beginning of a series we're going to be going talking about each one of these books and talking about the contents of them we're going to be talking about how they've changed the game how this is all going to sort of fit together uh, we're going to talk about the designer, we're going to talk about the company, we're going to talk about a lot of things. So please, if you enjoy this first sort of quick look, um, this this sort of primer into the series, I hope you'll come back and join the other ones. I want to give you a little bit of background into my history with Ataltus and with Mark Tassin, who's the main man behind this company. Mechanical Muse is the name of the company. And it is, sorry, it's a little out of focus there. I'm trying to see if my camera, my camera's being kind of goofy today. I don't know if it's the weather or what's going on. But anyhow, Mechanical Muse is the name of the company. Mark Tassin is the main man there. He's got a lot of uh, great helpers. I was first introduced to this. Uh, so uh, Mark is a native of my corner of the world. We live in the same state. Uh, and there is a convention in Grand Rapids, Michigan called Grand Con that I first met him at, uh, I believe I had maybe talked to him online about the game a little bit before uh, going to this convention, but I was very excited to be able to meet him once I went there. This was years ago, all right? While I was there, I was given a copy of this book. This is the Champions of Ataltus. I believe this is still in print. I'm not 100% sure. I'll try to find out and put it in the link down below. Um, they're in the description down below, but if, uh, if, if it's still in print, you need to get a copy of this. Um, if you're a fantasy fan, doesn't matter if you're a fan of Ataltus or if you know anything about Ataltus, uh, if you're just a fan of fantasy, you're going to want this book. If it's not still in print, you might be able to find some copies, um, maybe through a third party service on Amazon, uh, Abe books, um, you know, check out a couple of different places as well too, but I'll try to see if it's still in print. I'll put a link in the description down below. But what this is, is a collection of short stories based upon the world of Ataltus. But I am not crapping you when I tell you this is one of the greatest short story collections I have ever read in my life. And how Mark was able to gather the talent that's in this book to provide stories for a world that he was just creating, I have no idea. It's got to be magic. It has to be. It has to be magic. We're talking Larry Correa, we're talking David Farland, we're talking Ed Greenwood, Elaine Cunningham, Mel Odom, Aaron Evans, and so many more. Are you kidding me? I had never heard about this world before. And like I said, this was years ago. We're talking about like, uh, you know, like we we're talking about Pathfinder First Edition is what this, he was kind of sort of attaching this world to at that point. And to be able to grab this level of authorship to create short stories for a world that is just burgeoning i just i'm blown away and the stories are fantastic very very well done like i said you don't need to know anything about a taltus you don't need to know anything about the world the stories all provide you everything you need to know a fantastic in my opinion one of the best short story collections i have ever read in my life if you were a fantasy fan if you're a fan of the Forgotten Realms novels, the Dragonlance novels, the any of the D&D novels, any kind of fantasy uh, uh, fiction from the 80s and 90s and early 2000s, this is a collection you're going to want to find. That set aside, <laughs> that was my introduction to the world of Ataltus and to Mark Tesson, the sort of main guru behind this whole idea. Uh, and so I just wanted to give you a little bit of primer of how excited I am about this coming to 5th edition. It's been years in the making, literally years in the making of getting this to fit into 5th edition. And it's it's not as easy as it sounds. There are tons of other things out there that are 
that are fifth edition focused, that are, are, are created and they're created very quickly. What this does is it takes fifth edition. Now, I love fifth edition. I love D and D and all its aspects, all its forms, every edition I have love for. Fifth edition is great. Don't get me wrong. I do love fifth edition. I play the hell out of fifth edition. I do uh, uh, appreciate the game itself. But I feel like, from my experience in the past, through second edition and third edition, was kind of where my my basis of the of fifth of of D and D began. And of course, I've gone back and and played first and basic and and O D and D, and I love all of those. But my heart really revolves around second and third edition. There was so much more depth, I felt like, to the game. Not more difficulty. Third edition did add, obviously add some more difficulties. It did obviously add some more uh, options and, and complexity to the game. But I mean, as far as depth of imagination, depth of story playing, depth of narratively driven campaigns, I feel like second and third edition was a little bit deeper than what fifth edition is and definitely way deeper than fourth edition what mechanical muse and mark tassin have done with ataltus is to bring that back to bring that sort of depth of storytelling back to the game and i believe it is going to change the way that you play fifth edition not rules wise because the rules are all going to be the same but he's added things to this series of books that's going to make the game much more enjoyable. You will need a 5th edition to play this. Now, I will say this. You'll need at least the, the player's handbook You'll or, or the basic rules that you can get with um, the beginner box or the... Uh, gosh, what was the second one called? There was another box that came and it had like sidekick cards, um, the Explorer's Edition maybe. Anyhow, the basic rules, which you can also download for free from the Wizards of the Coast website, you're going to need that to play this because you need the core rules to play this. You know, the aspects of rolling uh, combat and that kind of stuff. That's not explained in here. That's this is, this is just going to flesh out more of that. So you're going to need at least the player's handbook or the basic rules, um, which, again, you can get for free or you can get through one of those starter boxes. And the starter boxes are super cheap. They're like $20 for the first one. Um, uh, the starter box and then the second one. I can never remember the name of the second one, but it's my favorite box that the fifth edition's ever put out um, for that for the for the, the fifth edition line uh, because there's so much great stuff and content in there. Uh, that gives you the basic rules and stuff as well too. Here's what you can expect from Ataltus. This is the bevy of stuff that's currently available, and a few of these might not quite be available yet. Uh, it was through a Kickstarter campaign. Um, I believe that PDFs of all of these are available, but maybe not the actual print-on-demand or hardcover books uh, as seen here. Plus, there's a bunch of stuff. If you follow the um, uh, World of Ataltus Facebook page and Mechanical Muse, you'll see that there's a lot more stuff that they have planned that's coming out. Uh, but here's just a taste. Like I said, I want to keep this semi-concise and semi-short today because I just want to show you what's available. And then we're going to do deep dives into each one of these books as we go along. First of all, and I might have these out of weird, wonky order. I didn't look at them before I sat them down. No, I think they're all right. Um, World of Ataltus Game Master's Guide. Again, look at this artwork. Damn, it's so good. Um, very evocative of the thing. What's really cool about this game is it is, uh, it, it takes 5th edition and it takes, I don't want to say takes away because that's horrible. It doesn't really take anything away from the game, but it brings the game back to being Heroic focused, not superhero focused, because what 5th edition has done, and it, it is that sort of bit of a power creep where players are start off and they're just automatically very, very good at what they do. What a Taltus does is it brings it back to the idea of like 2nd edition, and I'll, I'll, I'll constantly go back to 2nd edition because it's, again, one of my favorite games uh, in the D&D line, but also like think of things like BX, Basic, and Back Me, and and um, you, you, where your hero is the focus of the story, but they're not super heroic. There are folks who are simply standing up against uh, uh, adversity and making that the sort of central theme of the story. So you have the Game Master's Guide. 
flip it over here on the back, kind of give you an idea of what's here. We're talking about what this book does. Inside this book, you'll find secret Game Master information, minions and monsters, expanded rules for disease, poisons, NPC attitudes, and traps, um, new options, brand new 5th edition options for hauntings, magical corruption, goodwill, character resolve, goodwill. Oh, you're going to love that. We're going to talk about that a lot. That is such a cool game mechanic. I can't even wait to share that with you. Skill specializations, investments, and more investments, right? Investing in things. What? Yeah, we're going to do it. Forbidden magic. Again, another thing I love about games that make magic dangerous. Ugh, it's in spades in here. Divine interventions, a toolbox of wonders, plus information and rules concerning magical baubles, art objects, counterfeiting and coin clipping, building and room quality, the effects of aging, and much, much more. This is all for the Game Master. This is stuff that you're going to add to the game as Game Master to this world. Oh, I can't even express how excited I am about Ataltus. It's it's glorious. It really is. Next up, the Adventurer's Guide. This is different from the Player's Guide. So what this is, is this is a book that is written sort of in world. that It, 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 it lays out the world of Ataltus. It gives you the history of the world. It gives you details about different portions and aspects of the world. It's going to talk about the history and the timeline and the dangers and the, the hidden places. This is all stuff that, again, you don't need. A game master should read this. If you want to get familiar with the world and, and the things that inhabit it, you're going to want to read this through. As players, you probably won't need to read this, but it's definitely something you would want to have. Let's take a look at the back. Discover a new world of adventure, a complete history of the world, adventuring in the civilized lands, adventuring in the wilds, forces of darkness, metaphysical wonders. Unlock the secret of the cosmos as you learn the metaphysics behind the power of magic, the truth about death and the afterlife and the secrets of the stars. Expert commentary. It's just, it's written very, very well. It's written in a style of being sort of an in-world artifact, um, the Adventurer's Guide. Next up, the Player's Guide, Player's Handbook, right? This is what um, you expect uh, to have uh, a Player's Handbook in a Dungeon Master or a Game Master's Guide for anything that's going to be kind of 5th edition. That's kind of a standard, right? Ever since like 2nd edition, 1st edition actually even, it's been broken up in this way. It's just, it's tradition at this point, uh, but still very, very beautifully done. What can you expect from this book? A big hefty book, too. We're talking about seven new lineages, plus all your old favorites. So all the the uh, aspects of, of stuff from 5th edition can be used, but there's a bunch of new stuff in here as well. Let me adjust this camera just a little bit. I just realized I bumped it and knocked it all over the place. Cultures and callings and finishing touches, heroic character classes, new point-based point magic system. I love it. I love it. I love it. And much, much more. Again, uh, we're going to talk about all these different lineages. We're going to de delve deep into how a magic system works in this because I love it. And I just knocked the camera again. This is the most unprofessional video I think I've ever put out. Next up are two um, books of adventures and or campaigns and or um, resource guides for the game. The first one's called Heroes of Thornwall. If you've been following this game at all, if you've been following a at all, um, this will look very familiar to you. Uh, this uh, was also a title that was put out during the Pathfinder 1st Edition days, um, but it's been updated to 5th Edition and had added some things to it. And yes, the recipes are still in this. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back. There's a video of me talking about this from the Pathfinder Edition, and I talk about the the uh, the recipes that you can make, real world recipes, written by a medieval author, medieval chef. Um, it, it yes, you're gonna want to. Uh, <laughs> Heroes of Thornwall. We have an introduction to Ataltus, the town of Thornwall, the Greenbrier Tavern, which is gonna be like your prancing pony, right? This is your your standard. Um, uh, tavern that everybody's going to meet. It's very, very detailed. Again, we'll go into all that later. The People of Thornwall and the Temple of uh, Mojan. A fifth edition adventure for uh, four, four to eight first level characters. Again, introduction into the world. And then we have the Defenders of Dunbury Castle. 
again, I love this cover art. This is just, just gorgeously beautiful. This is a little bit more of a longer campaign, um, more adventures and kind of stuff as well. Introduction to the region. I am so sorry. Military life. Dunbury Castle, uh, the Seer of Dunbury. Uh, people, sorry, it, there's kind of a weird glare back in here. People of Dunbury. This is sort of a regional guide uh, to the defenders of Dunbury Castle. And then there's an adventure in there as well, too. Please, please, please do yourself a favor and go check this out. I will put a link down below to the website. I'll put a link down below to the Facebook page. <sighs> go get yourself a copy of the Champions of Ataltus. You'll thank me later. Until next time, I'm QuestWise, so game on. Stay safe, my friends.